boys and girls, welcome to Base Camp. I've been looking everywhere for Mr. Steve, and I can't seem to find him. Have you guys seen him anywhere? I've been looking all through our steam lab, and he seems to be missing. Maybe you guys can check it out. Well, welcome to Base Camp. Welcome to Base Camp, everyone. I'm so excited that you've decided to join us today. I have got some most amazing things planned for you. And you know what? I've been wondering what you've learned about Base Camp. If you've got any questions or you'd like to talk to me, just go ahead and text me right here on my phone number. We're going to get ready to kick it off in Base Camp Online in three. What's going on everyone out in Base Camp land? I hope you were able to come to our movie night or bike ride night. If not, that's okay. We'll have more of these as the summer continues. I'll keep you posted right here, Base Camp Online. We have such a good day in store for you. And this day starts with a game that requires some hyper focus. After all, this month is all about focus. focus. In just a moment, we'll put an image up on the screen and you'll have 30 seconds to focus on that image memorize it, pay attention to everything you see, and make a mental note. When the image goes dark, I'll ask a series of questions. Hopefully you can work together with everyone in your family, at your house, or just play by yourself. You can remember enough of these images, I know, to answer all the questions that I have. Are you ready? Are you sure? Here we go. Memorize. it folks now focus do your best to keep the image in your mind let's see what you remember we will then go over the answers keep track of your scores first question how many compasses were there on the travel image that's right the answer is three there were three compasses you might have seen some clocks but those aren't compasses here we go question number two of those three compasses what direction was the biggest compass pointing towards? I told you you'd have to focus on that image. That's right, the answer is west. Question three, you saw some anchors, right? How many green anchors were in the image? Whoa, two green anchors, very good. Question number four, which of these objects was not in the travel image? Sunglasses, flip flops, a camera, or a globe? That's right, the answer, a globe. There was no globe in the image. Shout out for question number five. Did you see the suitcase with stamps on it? One of the stamps, there was a picture of a famous monument. Which monument did you see? That's right, the Eiffel Tower. Woo, you guys are great. Keep track of those right answers. Now for question number six, there was a map on the image. What color was the pin? Woo! That's right, the answer was blue! And the final question, question number seven. How many ship icons were there on the entire image? Wow, you all are so smart, the answer is five. There were five ship icons on that collage. All right, add up the right answers and see how many you were able to get. Great job on focusing. You all did an amazing job. Let's kick back into action with our favorite rappers, the Haggis Brothers. It's gonna work, okay? Oh, hey there, I'm MC Haggis, and this year is my beatboxing partner, Seamus McFamous. Give him a sample, Seamus. That's why he's the world's best. 
All right, this month is about faith. Believing in what you can't see because of what you can see. And actually, what we need to see right now are some lost sheep the whole town's been looking for, right, Seamus? Uh, hey. Well, we're gonna find them because of this. This here is a sheep whistle. It's guaranteed to call any sheep from anywhere. Hey. Well, of course hey. it'll work. It'll work. I bought it on Weebay, after all. All right, let's give it a go. I know it didn't make a sound. You don't have to yell at me, okay? Maybe it was upside down. All right, here we go. Hey! Seamus, will you stop yelling? I, you're gonna scare all the sheep away. You know, I'm starting to think that this whistle actually doesn't work at all. You're gonna give it a go? Go ahead. Okay, well that's just great. Between this whistle not working and you yelling, those lost sheep will never ever... Oh! Oh, Seamus, look between us! Look between us! Oh. Wait a second, wait a second. Blow that sheep whistle again. Go, 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 go! Aye. Seamus, Seamus! The sheep whistle worked! It, it must be like a dog whistle. It, it makes a sound we can't hear, but, but it called this, this, this sheep over to us! Oh, you know what? I feel like rapping about it. Kick it. Sometimes things don't seem to work. Our trust in them, we start to shirk. But when we trust, we find a quirk. We can trust in what we can't see because of what we can see. Like how this whistle worked. Now that's faith. Word. <laughs> oh, see you later, dancing sheep. See ya. Oh, okay. I wonder if they make a silent whistle for snack foods. Hey. Oh yeah? Oh. Wow. That's amazing. Blow, blow it again. Completely missed my face. That was a crazy. Okay, blow it again. Yeah. That's great. Let's say what faith is. Faith is trusting in what you can't see because of what you can see. Let's say that together. Faith is trusting in what you can't see because of what you can see. Today we watch Paul as he's shipwrecked. Although we cannot see God, he trusts him. Being shipwrecked is a tough place to be when you don't see what you want to see. Which reminds me of our bottom line. Knowing Jesus changes the way you see your problems. Say that with me. Knowing Jesus changes the way you see your problems. When have you seen something good come out of something bad? I know one day my wife, Elizabeth, made a cake. The whole cake fell apart. But you know what she did? She put it together in this bowl with whipped cream, chocolate, and a whole bunch of other ingredients, and it tasted amazing. You know, God has a way of using hard stuff to work for his good. Maybe for you, you lost a soccer game and some other sporting event. That moment, you were tempted to be upset. Instead, you chose to have a good attitude. And someone saw what was happening. And then you showed them who Jesus is through you. You and I do that because of what God has done in us. We call that transformed. Transform is when God helps you, me, and all of us love like Jesus because we've asked him to be our savior. Which reminds me of our memory verse. God's grace has saved you because your faith in Christ, your salvation doesn't come anything from you do. It's God's gift, Ephesians 2.8. You know, when you and I focus on our faith in Jesus, it helps us do more than sing loud. It helps us live loud. How does your favorite story end? Wait, first, how does your favorite story begin? In a world where a kid who has something to learn, something to discover, this kid finds unexpected friends. They head out on an adventure and face some tough challenges. Then when things are the darkest, when all hope seems lost, something, someone, comes through to save the day. And everyone celebrates! Now. Think about this. We are hardwired to love stories because each one of us is living one. We're all human and we all make mistakes. 
But sometimes the road ahead can be so rough, we don't know how to fix the problems we face. But we do know the times we've seen God at work. We know he sent a hero right into the middle of our story, God's own son, Jesus. And we know that when we follow Jesus, God promised an ending more incredible than anything we can imagine. Wherever we go, he goes with us too. When we live out our story with hope and faith, others can see God at work in us. That's why faith is an amazing way to worship God with your life. Because worship is about more than just singing loud. It's all about living loud. We can praise God on the good days and when things are hard. Worshiping Him is something we can do over and over again, no matter what you're going through. Remember the words in Romans chapter 8, 28. We know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love Him. He appointed them to be saved in keeping with His purpose. What we say with our mouths can help make our faith stronger. Our words are powerful. Let's use our words to speak life. Let's speak life with what we know to be true about God. And right now, Erica is going to introduce us to our story. You got this! You got this! You got this! You have got this! Yeah, now we're focused. Hey everyone, it's Erica. You might be wondering what I'm doing talking to myself in the mirror. Hey, what's up, how are you doing? Well, I decided I needed a little encouragement because it's been sort of a hard week. You see, a few days ago, my aunt was stuck at home with a broken leg. So, I took some soup to her house, but then her dog <coughs> peed on my shoe. And then I slipped and spilled the soup all over the place. And then the next day, I was walking home from the library and a car drove through a puddle next to me and splashed water all over me and all over my library book. Are you kidding me? Then, yesterday, I tripped over a sleeping cat and I fell into a prickly rose bush. Ah, ow, ow. <laughs> So, you know, it's been one of those weeks. And I'm trying to encourage myself to have a better day. But it's going to take faith. Faith is trusting in what you can't see because of what you can see. So, even though I still have a few scratches from yesterday's catastrophe, I have faith that today will be better. See? It's better already! Today's story is all about some people who are having a bad week. Actually, several weeks. And uh, okay, maybe they had bigger problems and spilled soup, a wet library book, and a thorny rose bush. But my week was still pretty bad. <laughs> I'll see you when the storm passes. That'll make sense after the story. Hey everyone, glad to see you all here today. You guys did a pretty amazing job on that opening game. Seriously, I saw all those famous places and it sure made me want to travel somewhere. But I have to ask, have you ever gone on a trip, but it didn't go quite as you planned? Maybe it was even downright disastrous, like bad weather, bad traffic, maybe stampedings, buffaloes. The good news though, is you made it through. I mean, you're here, right? Well, maybe you're there. <laughs> I don't know, you're here, right? I mean, we're all together. But here's the real question. How do you respond when moments like those happen? We can't escape moments that will be difficult. We will all face trips or days when nothing seems to go right. But when those days happen, what will our attitude be like when we go through them? It's an important question to answer. And when it comes to an important question, the first place you and I should look is in the Bible to discover how people handle these situations as they experience God firsthand and wrote them down. The Bible. It's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how He created us and loves us so much that He made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, 
From Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story, inspired by the book of Acts. So today, we're going to take a closer look, a moment recorded for us in the book of Acts that involves quite a trip. And this was one that certainly did not go as planned. Throughout the summer, we've been following the journeys of Paul as he and other leaders in the early church took the message of Jesus and began to spread it throughout the entire known world. These journeys were certainly not easy. Paul faced many difficulties along the way. He was beaten, laughed at, imprisoned, and chased out of town. Paul even found himself in the middle of a huge plot by the Jews in Jerusalem to kill him. After escaping to a nearby Caesarea and getting the runaround there, Paul finally asked to have his case heard before the most powerful man on the planet, Caesar. This was arguably a dangerous move because whatever Caesar decided would be final. But this is also had the potential to be a game changer because the most powerful man on the planet was about to hear about Jesus. Besides, Paul was getting nowhere in Caesarea and everybody was out to get him. So Paul was put under the order of the Roman commander named Julius and shipped off to Rome. And that's where our story begins. But first, we need a ship. Oh yeah, there we go, good job. Our seaworthy vessel. Actually, don't try to float in this one. It promises not to end well. Let's all pretend to get into our ship together. You ready? Here we go. Go ahead and step into your ship. Here comes Paul, handcuffed and put in chains. Now, there was a lot more people on this journey, but there is one more I want to draw attention to, Luke. Luke was the author of the Gospel of Luke, but he also wrote the book of Luke. He also happened to be a friend and traveling companion of Paul. So the account we are about to read was written down by Luke, who was an eyewitness. Pretty cool, right? Okay, everyone in the ships, let's the journey begin. Our voyage starts from Caesarea, where Paul had been held prisoner for more than two years. We're headed for Caesarea. Acts chapter 27, one says this. It was decided that we would sail for Italy. Paul and some other prisoners were handed over to the Roman commander named Julius. He belonged to the Imperial Guard. So Julius had his prisoners, including Paul, and they headed out for sea. Now, does anyone remember what their goal was? Right, Rome, all the way over there. Now, today, we have all sorts of navigational tools on ships to make sea travel fairly safe. You know what they had? Stars and maps and courage. And maybe a little bit of crazy traveling the seas was dangerous as Paul and his shipmates were about to find out. After a quick stop in Sidon, they set out again. In Acts chapter 27, verse four, it says, from there we headed out of sea again. We passed the calmer side of Cyprus because the winds were against us. Okay, let's get our ship moving. So over there was Cyprus. Paul had been here before, but this time the winds were pretty rough. As they tried to pass the island, the winds were against them. Oh, they finally passed the island and headed towards the island of Crete. Listen to Luke describe this incredible journey. Acts chapters 27, seven and eight. We moved along slowly for many days. We had trouble getting to Snidus. The wind did not let us stay on course. So we passed the calmer side of Crete, opposite Salome. It was not easy to sail along the coast. Then we came to the place called Fair Havens. Besides the name of the place, what stood out to you about the travel so far? Yes, those are some great answers. Moved slowly, had trouble, wind did not let us, not easy, whoo! So far it had been a pretty rough journey, but it was just getting started. And they considered leaving the island of Crete, the time of the year was very dangerous for sailing. 
Paul tried to warn the commander of this, but his warning was ignored. So they set out to the dangerous open sea. In Acts 27, 13 through 15, when a gentle south wind began to blow, they saw their opportunity. So they weighed anchor and sailed along the shore of Crete. Before very long, a wind of hurricane force called a nor'easter swept down from the island. The ship was caught by the storm and could not head into the wind. So we gave way to it and were driven along. As Luke describes the storm, he said the storm caught the ship and basically took it wherever it wanted. At one point, they even had to pass ropes under the ship to hold it from falling apart. Man, can you imagine tying up a ship with ropes? Soon they started to throw all the cargo overboard. How bad did it get? Check this out. Acts chapter 27, verse 20, Luke writes this. The sun and the stars didn't appear for many days. The storm was terrible. So we gave up all hope of being saved. But something amazing happened in the midst of this hopeless storm. Paul gave them hope. See, an angel had appeared to Paul the night before in the middle of the storm, telling him to not be afraid because he was going to make it to Rome to have his trial with Caesar. That's not all. The angel told him that not a single life would be lost. After two weeks of being lost in a storm and realizing they were nearing land, they made a decision to run the ship aground. You see that island over there? Head there! But before it could get to the island, the ship struck a sandbar. Now, from here, it gets a little dicey. You see, Roman protocol in a shipwreck was to kill all the passengers, keep them from escaping. Don't worry, don't worry. That was going to make it hard for Paul to get to Rome. But look what happened in Acts chapter 27, 42 through 43. The soldiers planned to kill the prisoners. They wanted to keep them from swimming away and escaping. But Julius wanted to save the life of Paul. So he kept the soldiers from carrying out their plan. Pretty amazing, right? Julius put his own life at risk to save Paul. Julius must have seen something in Paul. Even more, God clearly was working in the middle of this mess. Well, it turns out that after swimming to shore, they had crashed into the island of Malta. As Paul was helping build a fire, he was bit by a snake, but he shook the snake off into the fire. When the people saw that Paul hadn't been hurt by the snake, they figured he must be a god. Pubulus, their chief official, welcomed Paul and the others into his home. When they arrived, the official's father was super sick, but Paul prayed for him, and the man was miraculously healed. They all hung out in Malta for three whole months. Finally, they boarded another ship. They set sail for Rome. It was here in Rome that Paul lived under house arrest, waiting to appear before Caesar. During this time, he was allowed visitors and he spent his time sharing the message of Jesus boldly with whoever would listen. Check out what Acts says in 28, 30 through 31. For two whole years, Paul stayed there in a house he rented. He welcomed all who came to see him. He preached boldly about God's kingdom. He taught people about the Lord Jesus and no one could keep him from teaching and preaching about these things. So a shipwreck is probably worse than tripping on a cat, but a bad week is a bad week. And the important thing to realize is that we all have problems and we all get to choose how we react to those problems. Paul chose to trust that God was with him no matter what he was going through. You see, Paul understood that God had a bigger plan. Ever since Paul came to know Jesus as God's son, he had devoted his life to telling others about Jesus. And Paul knew that no matter what problems he faced, they were worth it if it helped him spread the good news of Jesus to the world. So Paul didn't necessarily focus on the storm, the shipwreck, and the snake bite like they were problems. Instead, he trusted that God was leading him somewhere. 
he trusted that God had a plan. And Paul's not the only person who can change focus like that. We can too! When we hope and trust in Jesus, it can change how we look at our problems. That's the one thing to remember today. Knowing Jesus changes the way you see your problems. When you're having one of those weeks, or months, or years, or whenever we have a problem, sometimes the bad stuff is all we can focus on. But when you know that God has a plan and that Jesus is always with you, it can help take the focus off yourself and put your focus on Him. Whenever you're facing tough situations, remembering that God is with you can make it less hard or scary. So don't forget, God has got this. See you next time. Bye. There's so much I love about this story. Sure, it has action and adventure, but more than that, we get to see a few really important things in this story. Why was Paul headed to Rome in the first place? He was headed there because he had been sharing the message of Jesus. So you might think Paul was doing God's work. Everything was going to be perfectly well in his life because of that. Nope, not even close. Paul still went through some really hard times, even though he was doing God's work. But those tough times ended up becoming opportunities where God was able to do even more through Paul, like his relationship with Julius, the commander. I'm not sure Julius would have ever seen Paul's faith in Jesus up close and personal if Paul was just kicking back in a lounge chair, sunning himself on the deck of the ship all the way to Rome. Plus, if the ship hadn't crashed on the island of Malta, the chief's official's father might have never been miraculously healed. Even when Paul finally made it to Rome, he was still a prisoner, but that didn't stop him. Do you know he actually wrote several of the letters that are in our New Testament from prison in Rome, and he continued to share the message of Jesus boldly to anyone who would listen. There are so many moments where Paul went through something really bad. Okay, really, really bad. And yet, he still believed that God was with him through it all. And because of this, he saw these trials in a completely different way. He saw them with hope. I'm guessing some of you have gone through or are going through some pretty difficult stuff. Like this week, the report has been that you and I need to keep gathering in groups of less than 25. Then you might have heard of school being delayed till September 8th. Wearing masks, school changes, everything that's going on might be really hard for you. Then there's a ton of stuff I didn't say or stuff in your life and in your home I don't even know. And there is no getting around it. Some of it is just plain hard. But when we're able to see these moments with a new perspective, when we believe that Jesus is with us and that he will never leave us, it gives us hope to see our way through our problems. It doesn't mean that it's going to be easy, but it does mean that we won't be alone. Let's remember our bottom line. Knowing Jesus changes the way you see your problems. When have you seen something good, kind of something bad? Maybe you have a personal example or you've seen it with a friend or a family member. Sometimes sharing these stories can be an encouragement to those all around or who are currently going through some pretty tough stuff too. Maybe you're not going through something tough right now, but you have a friend or a family member who is. Think about Luke in the story. We often focus on Paul, but do you know that Luke, he wasn't a prisoner. He didn't have to go, he chose to. In other words, Luke went through this with Paul willingly, and I imagine that it made a big difference. Do you know someone who needs you to travel with them through their storm? It won't be easy, but we need someone to go with us. Talk more about that with your parents or caregivers. Let's thank God that we can trust him no matter what. It's comforting to know that no matter what we're going through, God is with us. Thanks for hanging out with me and all of us and focusing on your faith. 
seeing what you can't see by what you can see. Catch you right here next week in Basecamp Online.